Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today I want to take myself a little break from our main project, the foldable, movable, everything doable house. And I went into another world, this time the flat terrain world, so that we can go crazy with a bunch of contraptions here as well. So I'm not going to abandon the house project idea just yet, but I also want to come up with a few other ideas that are going to be hard to implement into the house. The first one being to have a nice openable garage door and I would like this to be opened just the way I'm used to. I'm not sure how you guys do it in America or so most of the time but in Switzerland most of our doors are one solid plate and they kind of shift and lean backwards until they are stored on the ceiling of the inside of the garage. I'm gonna put up uh, an image just to illustrate what I mean. So this is the most frequent type of garage door that we have here in Switzerland. So I decided we are just gonna do that. For that we are gonna need two mechanisms, mainly a piston arm and also a rotationable part. So why don't we go ahead and lay down a foundation for our garage. I'm just gonna kind of measure out a plate that is gonna be, I think you can go 16 or so blocks. So it's gonna be 32 by 32 blocks. That's exactly what we are gonna do right here. There we go. Hmm, thinking about it, this might actually be a little bit big for a garage. Yeah, we might want to take away a bunch of blocks right here. The amount doesn't really matter. Just to make it a little bit more thin or a little bit less wide, depending on how you look at it. But I think this is an appropriate size for our garage right here. So let's go ahead and actually make something right up to here. Hmm, it could be even a little bit taller. What do you think? So let's hop on top of here and yeah that's what happens sometimes when you are not standing on the correct spot there we go we want to move this maybe up to this point probably let's see how that feels hmm it's still a huge garage but you have to think of the vehicles they are normally also a little bit bigger than your everyday vehicle you encounter in real life so this could be a thing, you know? Great! Okay, so before we build anything around the garage and decorate it or so, it is probably best to think about the setup. So if I'm not mistaken, this is now exactly 16 blocks in uh, height. Yes, indeed. 16 blocks or 15 to be exact, if you just count the in-betweens. That means we have to push it back 15 blocks into a horizontal direction and also rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm guessing the piston arm is what we have to do first. So let's count up 16 blocks into this direction or rather 15 or does it have to be 16? Like 16 for attaching the mechanism? Anyways, let's continue the frame right here. We want to finish up this garage to the best of our abilities. Okay, great. So this needs to be the length of our piston arm. I would guess we are gonna make each arm five blocks so that we end up with 15 blocks. So if we start right from here, no, that is a bad idea. I have to start from the top, of course. Let's see what we can do about that. We would be going five blocks down and then we go with another arm right here. We have to go five blocks up this time. And then last but not least, this arm going five blocks down again. Okay, let's hook this up to a controller just to see that it works. We're gonna need a controller and the button. Let's have that bad boy right here just for the time being. And we want to hook them up in order. So this one second and this one third. And then of course we also want to adjust them. Uh, first one needs to go 90, 180 and 90 if I remember correctly. Then we hook up the button to the controller, click that once and realize that yeah everything is turning around the wrong way of course. So we fix that. This one should be looking into the other direction and this one too. Come on, let me do that. Oh, but not 90 degrees. What is going wrong here? Oh no, it is actually going right. So that is good. Okay, now the problem is that the moving part is right at the bottom. So we are moving back the door and it should also go up. Another problem is also that it kind of reaches inside of the garage, though it is just 
at the corners, but still, it's gonna make the garage a little bit narrower. So, you know, apart from the mechanism that we have established, which is uh, gonna work out, we kind of have to find a different position for this. So let me just figure out a few configurations that might work, and once I have a better idea what I really want to go for, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I played around with the concept for a little bit and I think I came up with the solution that I want to go for. Right now the garage is obviously open, I just put a little test door here so you can see the mechanisms. And I figured the exact length of the piston should actually be the amount of blocks that you need, but you have to take into consideration all of the bearings. So right now this is a length of 9 blocks times 2, that equals an 18, but I have 3 bearings and therefore we lose 3 blocks and therefore we will go 15 blocks, 18 minus 3. So that is uh, good to know, I guess, because measuring out things such as this is a vital part of the designing process. However, let's go ahead and start up this button. I'm just gonna click it and the garage should fold naturally down here. The way I've done it is with an additional bearing just turning 90 degrees. So if we have a look at that in reverse, we can see how it works. So for a functional piston, you only need the two parts to decide for the length and the third part is just gonna be you know the thing that you are pushing forwards so there we go now the only issue I have with that or you know one of the issues is that it is not folding in properly there's also still a little bump but more importantly it is not very well integrated into the building overall I would like this to be kind of mirrored so the moving part is all the way on the side however now that I know what I'm going for we are just gonna get rid of that whole shebang here maybe I should have done it in a different order Order. But alas, what you gonna do? There we go, all fixed and fine. Now it's time to decide for the final location of this controller and possibly the switch. We might want to hook this up to an XOR gate. I think it would be best to go with some kind of metal block. So I'm guessing we are starting right here with this bad boy there. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh man, I wish there was a number. So one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine add another bearing go up nine blocks there we go add another bearing and now we want to go over as many blocks as we need into this direction and whoop yep yeah, that was bound to happen the controller is gonna go right here i'm guessing let's see this stuff is actually now kind of in the way i would like it to be yeah somewhat like that that even looks like a thing that goes into a garage however now it's time to uh, fold this thing up again and of course it's gonna result into a bunch of issues Oh man, oh man. Will we be able to fix that? I think we have to get rid of a few blocks here. Yep, yeah, that actually already helped. Okay, anyways, we want to already set this baby into the correct positions. 90, 180 and 90. And then obviously they should also turn into the correct direction. And I think in this example we only have to turn this one around before we had to do the other ones, but we also place them into another direction. So, for the time being, just a button to test things out right there and we are gonna click it there we go oh yeah it's going a little bit fast we don't need such a fast moving door slower often results in more epicness anyways we want to expand this thing when it is extended all the way up to this block and right here we want to have another bearing and obviously right here there comes the actual door so we will need to expand this all the way up to here and then I guess we're just gonna build the closed stage of the garage door. Now let's see, are there any blocks that we can, you know, use for a garage door? How about we made this thing out of staircase steps? That could look cool. And we could also do a bunch of these staircase short railings. Yeah, I'm actually going with these. So we're gonna try to make a simple wooden frame for this garage door. Something that expands all the way down to here and rounds off with another layer of wood. There we go, yes. And now we fill that stuff up with things like this. Let's see what we can do about this. There we go, okay. I don't think this looks particularly good, but you know, it is at least something to work with. Right, so let's hook up the last bearing to this 
thing right now. I built it in the closed stage, which is kind of an issue because if we move this, yes, then it should be in the open stage. So by default, we have to switch this 90 degrees. Now let's see in which direction it is facing. We want it to turn into this direction. So we will have to start with plus 90 degrees, maybe as default. Yes, there we go. Okay. And it is kind of fitting here. No, it is actually not completely working. But if we remove this block, oh no, that didn't even help. It might be too heavy for the bearing. <laughs> Anyways, we want to also switch within the controller that once we click the button, it turns around minus 90 degrees, so into the other direction. And this should theoretically give us this nice garage door effect. But yeah, here we could see it clearly. It was way too heavy. So I'm thinking, what if we only did like half of it and we did the other thing on the other side? What effect would this give us? And could we go a little bit crazier with our garage door? Oh no, there is actually an odd center so we cannot really do it this way. Okay, so just for testing purposes, let me actually try to do this with a lighter material. Maybe we can do it with a little bit of wood and just decorate it. Okay, let's see how the bearing performs without all the heavy metal. Yeah, that looks much better. It looks like it's going in a rail. So that was indeed a problem. I will have to think through... Ah, oh, that was beautiful. I have to think through certain concepts of my other designs, realizing that it has such a strong impact. So let's just try to do something with wood. Maybe we can leave a little bit free. Gonna leave two spaces free every now and then and just make some kind of a grid pattern here. Okay, so right now it looks much more like a portcullis. However, it seems to be working exactly the way I am used to. Well, not exactly the way. We already reached the limit of the weight that we can apply. So maybe it would be best to actually make a two-way door, kind of add another mechanism so you can make the doors doubly as heavy and you even have the mechanism mirrored on the other side. Let me come up with something that utilizes this strategy. Okay guys, there we go. I played around with the concept just a tiny little bit and I actually did also some research, came across a few interesting XOR gates and I have to say I have here a nice XOR gate. Look at how compact this baby is. It is unfortunately not my idea, but fortunately enough I understand it enough so that I can actually show you how it is built. So it does the exact same thing as my own XOR gate that I built in the previous episode or in one of the previous episodes, but this one is just, you know, so much better. However, let's get to the garage. First, I can, of course, open it up. And right now, this is how it looks. I'm doing it now with two piston arms. Therefore, the entire thing here is actually divided up in the center. However, because it is not too heavy, the bearings can keep up and you can almost not see it that it is actually two objects. And I used this lightweight material right here in order to be able to achieve that. And of course, I hooked up the XOR gate over there with my switches so that we can activate the door from both sides. Now, the only issue I see is that we are missing one block here. I didn't even realize. So I <laughs> messed a little bit up, but I think we could utilize this maybe. We could add another thingy machingy right here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna fix this up. However, let me just quickly show you that XOR gate because it is really brilliant and you have to use this one if you are building XOR gates in the future. So what you need for that is a simple mechanism with a bunch of bearings. Now, let me think about that. We are going to add our sensor first of all. The sensor is going to go right here and of course right now it is detecting nothing because it is detecting the own structure which is why you should encase it into some kind of a little cavity such as this. However, now that we have that, we want to set up one bearing right here with a block and then write another bearing with the controller. You don't really have to use the controller. However, since we can implement the controller directly into the contraption, this is of course much better. I didn't even think of that. So right now the sensor is actually detecting the controller itself. 
The next thing we have to do is add a block right here. Now we can add our first bearing there and we're going to do the same thing we did over there. We had one bearing and then adjacent to another block right another bearing. On top of this block we're going to have our uh, next controller right there. So you can see here we have the two controllers which can be detected by the sensor. And this is all we need, believe it or not. We can now enclose this and we have to leave at least one block of gap in between here. So we cannot really, you know, cover it up like so. This wouldn't work, but we can cover it up niftily and hide it within walls or wherever. You don't have to build this lying on the floor, of course. So we can even close this off. However, now for the settings, of course, we need to hook up the controllers to the bearings where they are attached to. So we're going to hook this one up and also this one to the bearing it is attached to and then we need to hook up the controller to the bearing the first one that we have placed here and this one to the other one so both of the controllers are able to influence their own angle but also influence the angle of the other controller this way can you see that I hope you can however now we still have to rotate stuff into the other direction let me think about that hmm I think we're first gonna set up the settings here so what we want to start with is a default default setting of minus uh, 30 I believe yes minus 30 but only for the first one so there we go this one is already going into the wrong direction we want to change it right here and this one of course should also start with a default of minus 30 so right now you also heard it the sensor is no longer activated you can see the green light is off because both controllers are in a 30 degrees angle and therefore out of the reach of the sensor and the sensor is detecting this block right now and I have to say this is so intelligent to use I mean who came up with that I don't think I would ever have come up with that however once we press the button of course we want to rotate 15 degrees into this direction and at the same time we want to influence the bearing of the other controller so we also want to rotate this I believe 15 degrees let's actually see what happens we're gonna hook up our two switches so the two switches obviously are gonna be hooked up to these controllers right it doesn't matter which switch is gonna go where it doesn't make a difference anyways so now that we have that let's press one switch no first of all we need to set the same thing for the other one plus 15 plus 15 right let's see what it does we are gonna click this button and yeah this is going into the wrong direction here I think let me actually quickly check here so they go like so and like so okay first in and then out we have to switch this one so you can see the first green arrow is going in then it is going out and right here it has to go in and then out okay there we go I think this is the correct setting so right now default stage the switch is off and now if we click this button then both of the things will rotate however this one is gonna go right into here and therefore the sensor is active but now if I activate this switch so both of the stages are active then this should rotate 15 degrees downwards which is not enough because this is active and has turned this bearing here also if you get my drift this is really complicated I think to understand you know once you see it and build it yourself it's gonna get much more clear however now we want to also activate this switch so what should happen is this is going down but the other one is going up and therefore the sensor is not active and there we go guys this is the entire thing I mean so compact I'm, I'm really adoring the person who has come up with that I'm not sure because I have seen it in multiple videos and nobody made a claim that they invented it or that they have seen it somewhere else so I'm gonna remain neutral on this topic and just applaud the person. Alright, so now that you know what this is about, this took me longer to explain than I anticipated. But there we go, we are done. There's only one more thing that I want to take care of. I'm not probably gonna spend the time to beautify this in today's episode. Building the functionality was the exciting part anyways. But as I said, there's one more thing we need to take care of. And that is once this thing is going up, yes then there is a little gap right here and I'm not happy about that and I think we are gonna solve this by adding something here let me see could we for instance get rid of this entire thing here and just add two bearings on the sides then we're gonna do this let's see where's the center probably right 
here. And then we also need like a little wooden block on the sides here. Oh, no, that went too far. There we go. Just up to here. That should be good. Now I should be able to also rotate these bearings depending on in which stage we are. So let's see. I should still have two spots. Yeah, number nine and number ten. There we go. They should rotate. Hmm, upwards probably. Let's first see what happens if we just rotate it 90 degrees, if, if it still works or everything breaks. Go, uh, hit the button and, oh, no, no, no! <laughs> That was not my intention there. Okay, so we might have to rotate this first. Let me actually do that. We are going 90 degrees and everything else has to go later. So I just have to move everything one further over. Can I... Oh, it'd be great to click this button and it would do that. But there we go. Through the magic of editing, it is now happening first. So let's see this in the progress. We want to click the button and then it rotates this and pushes out the garage... And Ah, yeah, this could happen a little bit faster, to be completely honest with you. And do we want to put it down again? No, I don't think so. We just want to leave it at that. So this is the closed stage of the garage. And then we open it up again and it should be sealed theoretically. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, well, I think that is good enough for now. Of course, this one here, we could hide inside of the wall since I built it in a way so that it is right adjacent to the wall. Mm, or actually not too much. I mean, it doesn't bother too much. You have these in normal garages with the system anyways. You know, kind of beams and rails and stuff like that. However, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's brainstorming episode, then don't forget to leave down a like, a comment, suggestions for future episodes, etc. Thank you so much, guys. It is very much appreciated. Have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you soon. Bye-bye.